So time management for me in the military most often was very structured. It's very structured in a sense that I think most people's jobs are where it's eight to four, nine to five. And that's very different than an academic school environment. School for me, particularly at a four year university, was more like being on a deployment. There is no such thing as just a six hour day or an eight hour day. When you become a student, it really is almost a 24 hour process. It's not just the six hours that you spend in the classroom every day. It's the four to six hours of homework that you have, you know, after that as well. And so, you know, for time management, I think that that's something that people need to consider. And I think that perhaps as, you know, military veterans, definitely need to consider it more of like a, a deployment where your time is never really your own. You may have that six hour shift, but then, you know, some kind of crazy thing could happen and you have to get back out there, you know, and do it. Or, hey, your shift doesn't actually start until eight in the morning, but you have all these two hours or three hours of prep work for some, you know, ex some process that's coming up or some inspection. And so time management is, is really important at the university level to bear in mind that it's so much more beyond the time you spend in the classroom. When you're in the military, your time is always managed. Someone is always telling you what to do, what uniform to be in, et cetera. You always know what you're gonna do when you wake up and what you're gonna do throughout the day. When you leave, that is not the case any longer. You have to motivate yourself to do things, to, to, to uh, structure your day, to uh, you know, be your platoon leader and decide what, what tasks need to be accomplished and how, and, you know, how you're gonna do it. And so for me, that is still a huge issue. I suck at managing my own time. I, um, and so one of the things that in the military that was really good for me was the repetition, the, uh, the structure that I had. Uh, you know, I wake up at a certain time and I do this. And so I try to build my life out that I have certain amounts of structure in it that is easy for me to follow. You know, I know I'm gonna be waking up at this time. I know my first hard time is you know, at 10 o'clock to go to class. Um, and then I, you know, I try to take advantage of, uh, you know, when there's downtime, I try to make sure I'm doing something productive in it. I, a lot of it comes down to what, you, what is your goal? What are you trying to get out of your day? What are you trying to accomplish? And one of the things is I think about it at night before I go to bed, uh, before, you know, or the day before, what am I trying to do the next day? What, what has to get done? What do I want to get done? What doesn't have to get done? What can wait? And um, I use that to kind of point me in the right direction, but it's still something I, I'm, I, I struggle with. It's a huge challenge and um, it, it's, it's important to be aware that, that you're not going to be making your own, your own schedule, or you are going to be making your own schedule, but you're not always going to be as good, as, as good at it as you want to be. When I was in the Marines, Marines were constantly watching over me, especially as a Lance Corporal or a PFC. Um, my time was always their time. But once I transitioned into school, I realized I, I, was more, I had to be held accountable for my own time and how I spent it, which meant that if I wanted to kill two hours on Facebook, no one was going to tell me that that's not a good idea. No one's going to tell me that that's a problem because I have a huge exam tomorrow. Um, I also realized that a habit that I think a lot of people in the military pick up is that they tend to zone out because there's a lot of downtime, so your mind just wanders. It's really quite like, it's really a very helpful technique in the military, but outside it's not that helpful. And that can also lead to just sort of wasting time. Um, something that I found to be helpful for two reasons is avoiding distractions. For me, it's Pinterest, Facebook, social media, YouTube. And I found that if I just put that aside, and I really had to practice self-restraint, put that aside, um, I would A, save more time, and B, perhaps more importantly, it would, it would keep more clutter outside of my brain. There's so much trash that we see online, and it's fun to look at, it's fun to read, but it's not helping us, and it just clouds your mind. And once I realized that this was a problem for a few reasons, time and just it's, it's affecting my thought process, I realized that that really helped me kind of focus more on school. Um, and then it's nice to reward yourself in your downtime. Like, go on, go on Facebook, talk about how you baked a brownie. Um, but when you're, when you're in school, it's just, it's really killing you. I think continuing your education is really important. However, for many students like myself, it is not the only thing that we're trying to manage or work on in our lives. 
Um, during my undergraduate studies, I was also a single mom. And so I found time management for me that much more difficult as opposed to perhaps my peers because I not only had to find time to manage all of my academic requirements, but I also still needed to find a way that I could still be a good mom. And so I found that what worked for me was having very clear boundaries and being honest with my professors as far as what my status is. Hey, I'm a mom and I can't predict what kids are gonna do. I may get that phone call and I'm not gonna make class today, but I promise I will get that work in. I think most of it is just being very upfront with people so that they have real expectations for you. And most importantly, setting real expectations for yourself. That is probably the most difficult part about trying to be a student and a family person. And that's because we always probably underestimate the time that we will take to get things done. Always, we always underestimate that. And so you feel like you can be Wonder Woman or Superwoman and you're like, no, there's 24 hours in a day. Of course I can get all these things done. And we tend to overload ourselves and we put too much on the plate, underestimating probably the time that we have and, and really just the skill set that we have, just the strength to do that. And so I would just recommend and say, as far as time management goes, set realistic goals for yourself. Give yourself realistic expectations and have a very open line of communication with your support systems and the people around you. So a strategy that I found really helpful for me in regards to time management is writing things down. Um, in general, I, I realized in the military, time is very much accounted for, but I'm not the one that's accounting for it. It's not, I, I'm not planning it. Other people are planning it for me. Um, so when you're in control of your time, you have to figure out actually how do you use it the best as possible because really time is your best resource. I realized that first I use like a monthly planner because then I can actually visually see like, okay, at the top of the month, I, it looks like I have some things coming up. I still have a few weeks in between this exam or whatever the case is. Um, so I found using a monthly planner to be extremely helpful and then each day within the month, of course, I would write down a small list, like on a piece of paper, like a small notebook of just things that I knew I had to do that day. Maybe send so-and-so an email or um, make sure that this was submitted or finish up this paper. So I was, keep, I was able to keep track of time um, in terms of just like an overview as well as day to day. And that really helped me, that took off the burden of having to remember things. Like I, I don't, I wanna remember facts for an exam, not, not the fact that I have to send an email. The homework syllabus was definitely my best friend during all, all every single semester um, that I spent in college. Uh, I would, you know, shop around classes and I, once I decided which class I was gonna take, I would put all of my syllabuses together. And that helped me in so many different ways. Um, for one, I kind of had a, a structure that I was really missing from the military. I had um, my days kind of lined up. I knew what I needed to do when I needed to do it. Um, and I also knew like when I was gonna have a, a, a tricky area, like a trouble spot. So for example, um, there was there was one time I noticed maybe like a month ahead of time that I that I had a test and an essay do do on the same day, and for me that you know there was a lot of anxiety around that. So I emailed both of my professors. I let them know what was going on, and both of them were like, "Wow, you've you've really got your stuff together. Uh, go ahead and take an extension, um, you know, for you know for my essay." And then you know for my my other professor was like, "Hey, way to be on top of things," um, and that's helped me you know multiple times. Oftentimes my veteran peers uh, sort of struggle with the uh, first time managing their own time and not having the structured schedule or at least as structured as it was in the military. For myself I, I, I tried to seize as much control over my self-care as I could. So what that meant for me was sleeping eight hours a night, go, getting into bed at, uh, by latest 11 p.m. and being up at a certain time. And once I sort of seized control of, of my sleep schedule, I was able to sleep, seize control of uh, what was happening during the day. So structuring, uh, you know, I'm going to do this homework from 10 a.m. to noon, then I'm going to take a half hour for lunch, then I'm going to go to class, 
and then this sort of structure repeats itself throughout the day. But um, time management for me began at seizing control of my sleep schedule and understanding what I needed to do for my own body uh, to perform the best at the university. Time management is something that I take very seriously. I find that it's probably, everything else sort of falls into it for me, but having you know very specific goals in mind that I'm working towards, which allow me to really figure out um, how to filter the day-to-day -day activities and how I'm structuring my time and approaching tasks in general. Um, to really, again, kind of figure out what's necessary, what's helping me reach that goal and what isn't. And even, you know, again, there's small things that maybe aren't directly helping you reach your goal, but they're good for your mental health and that's okay. Um, but having that filter allows you to, instead of just kind of having things happen to you, figuring out what, you know, how you're approaching these things. And so when you're coming up against whatever it is, whether it's uh, relationship issues or homework or whatever, um, having something that you're kind of stopping for a moment, asking yourself, actively thinking about, you know, why am I doing this and how? Um, and so, you know, s simple things during the day, like food and clothing for me, I find, you know, having multiples of clothes that work, you know, seven black t-shirts so I don't have to think about it, find a pair of shorts that fits well and buy a couple more pairs, slightly different color, woo, um, you know, but not having to spend 20 minutes in the morning thinking about what am I going to wear today? Is this, is, this is what I'm wearing and then that's dirty, grab the clean one, that's exactly the same. Um, you know, it, Einstein supposedly had the same three brown suits that worked for him, you know, can't go too far wrong. Uh, food, having, you know, fairly basic, just kind of a boilerplate for what the meal prep is that I'm doing for the next few days. I can do that on autopilot. I don't have to waste time thinking about it. It's, it's quicker. I know what I'm buying when I go to the grocery store and just trimming those things down that are not directly contributing to me achieving my goals. And so, you know, what, and more school related, you know, having, um, you know, looking at the syllabus for the entire semester instead of just that day or for the next couple of days or until next week, but really understanding, okay, what are the big projects? When is that happening? When are the exams? You know, understanding that, planning, you know, or even if there's a project that you're, you know, you're going to be needing to do at this time, starting to let that kind of percolate and think about, okay, well, what might I want to do for that? So you're not at the last minute scrambling to find the good idea. Maybe you're in the shower and you have one of those, oh, maybe that would work for that project. Write it down on a post-it note, slap it somewhere visible um, so that you're saving that time that you would have been spending later and feeling stressed and, you know, just really have a better understanding of what the long term is looking like and whether you're thinking in semester lengths or starting to really think about, you know, even further out for larger goals of a career or whatever it is having those things that you're, you're filtering your decisions through on a smaller day-to-day -day basis. Self-care in the military means performing uh, physically and mentally when uh, it's needed, which, um, which often comes in the form of tr physical training or going on some deployment. Uh, but it, the truth is in the military, you abuse your body all the time. You go out drinking, you party all the time, uh, and then, you know, it's fine to go and run 10 miles in the morning after you've been out until 2 a.m. And some of that culture sort of spills over to the university, but it, it's not conducive to learning. You can't go to class every day hungover. You can't show up to a 10 a.m. lecture and expect to be able to think if you were out until 2 in the morning. So for me, self uh, sort of separating that culture, still being able to engage with it, you know, have friends, be social, find other veterans, but thinking about my self-care and what I need uh, was most, is most important. I think that a topic that frankly isn't given enough importance or talked about frequently is self-care. The 
attitude a lot of times in the military um, is largely based on other people letting you know what it is you have to do, scheduling your dental appointments for you, and you have to be at formation at this time, and if you don't wake up, someone's going to wake you up. These things are not done in isolation, and so you, you get out of the military, and all of a sudden you're, you've made the decision to go to school. No one is going to wake you up if you sleep through your alarm and that's on you, and no one's gonna schedule your dental appointments. No one's going to force you to work out, um, or to remember to eat, or to shower, or to eat well, or to find time to do something that is really important to you that has nothing to do with school. Um, and so, you know, we kind of, especially, you know, combat arms, you, you know, the saying of weapon gear self, right? And so that's the, the order of priorities and probably a little cheesy, but, you know, in school, that order changes and or thinking of your mind as your weapon, if you want. And so your weapon is not going to be functioning optimally if you're not taking care of it. And that means getting six to eight hours of sleep every single night being on a healthy schedule, not losing an entire weekend to some crazy hangover and then not doing your homework and playing catch up and being stressed out and then, oh, I forgot to schedule that dental appointment, you know, really making sure to take the time to remember that you have to be an adult now and you're in charge of you. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean that you're not doing well as a student or you know, just trying to power through it and not admitting that you can't do something well. Um, it's finding those times to really sit with it, figure out what it is that you want to be doing. You know, what is your goal for doing this? Why are you at school? Distilling that, finding that thing that allows you to keep everything else in perspective. There's your there's always going to be little day-to-day -day problems that come up, but they seem a whole lot bigger if you don't have that larger thing you're working towards. You know, being, I, probably most people in the military, I would say, are wired to need a mission. I know it's true for me and for a lot of my friends. Um, and so I find that if there's that larger mission that I'm working towards, again, it gives me that go, no go filter keeping things in perspective, the little day-to-day -day problems are little day-to-day -day problems. But again, if there's just, if there's nothing out there that you're working towards, those things seem much larger. And so they're a lot more overwhelming and then it's a lot easier to kind of, well, I'm in a bad mood, so I don't need to go to class and things just fall apart. And so um, part of that really important self-care, again, is figuring out for yourself and not having it be hold to you is what is my mission? What is it that I'm working towards? Why are these things important to me? Um, and then, you know, the smaller strategies in the day to day of making time to work out or to meditate or to take a nap, whatever it is, read fan fiction, doesn't matter, whatever it is to you that really, you know, kind of, you can just zone out and not be thinking about school and let your brain rest and feel like you're doing something for you at least a little bit every day or a few times a week, you know, even getting a beer with a friend, whatever it is, and finding those things and really making sure that that's in your schedule because it's so easy to let it all pile up and, well, I'm not as important. I can put that aside because school and or whatever it is. And so you're not going to do well if you're not taking care of yourself. And so that's that has to happen and it's I feel like a lot of people forget that pretty easily and so forcing yourself to make sure that you are a priority and that's not a selfish thing that's something that just that's how this needs to happen it's very different from the military and you know where you don't matter the guy to your, your left and your right matters to you know now you matter and so learning that understanding that sitting with it um, and really figuring out um, how to engage with that in a meaningful way.